Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Now, as some of you may know, I've been searching for an off-grid trailer for a little while, something that I could take out into the back country or crown land, disperse camping as you may call it down in the US, and I think I found something that's gonna be absolutely perfect for me. Now, we're gonna go through the build of this trailer, electrically speaking. There is really nothing electrically speaking on this trailer two USB plugs and a battery tray. That was just about it. And I made a few modifications. I added a little bit of height with tires. Now I have about 12 inches of clearance. And I added this nice battery box with the help of a neighbor. Uh, I think it's gonna be much better for storing my electrical equipment in. It's gonna be protected from the elements. Now, I wanna to go totally off grid. I have to bring all my power with me. So I needed a fixed solar panel. I'm going to go with this one here, the Bouge RV Yuma 200 watt solar panel. I think it's an awesome solar panel. You can check out my review of that. You need a solar charge controller. This Bacteria 20 amp solar charge controller should work great. I also wanted DC and AC power, so we're going to install this Renergy 1000 watt inverter. And to store the solar power, this Vader 100 amp self-heating battery. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery. It is self-heating. Gets cold up here in Canada. That's something good to have. So the purpose of this video is just to show you the trailer. Maybe this is something that you've considered doing for yourself and to show it to you from the viewpoint of somebody who's a complete amateur. I'm not an electrician, although I did get some advice from an electrician with some of these components and he guided me through the process a little bit. But it's actually very simple, something that pretty much anybody could do. This is not a tutorial, just for entertainment purposes only. Get your own advice. I'm very comfortable with the way I'm doing this build out. You should be comfortable with the way that you do yours. So the first step that I'm going to do is install this solar panel. Now this is the back of the solar panel. It's an adhesive backed unit and you have to prep this surface. I'm going to use regular old rubbing alcohol to repair the surface. You want to make sure that it's nice and clean. And I believe rubbing alcohol is the recommended way to do this. So there probably is a right and a wrong way to do this. Hopefully I'm not dead wrong in the way I'm doing this, but what I've done is I've cleaned off my roof I've taped off the area where I would like the solar panel to sit. I've also taped the other end tight down to the roof so it doesn't move around. Now my plan is to lift up this end, remove the plastic backing over these strips, slowly lay down the solar panel, and then attack it from the other end and adhere that end of the solar panel to the roof. Hopefully it works out okay. This is pretty sticky stuff. Here we go. That went pretty smooth. I'm pretty happy with the way 
it turned out. It's right on the lines where I want it to be. Pretty happy with that. Now it's very easy to lay down. I'm just going to give it a good press and at some point I need to silicone the front edge of this panel so the wind doesn't catch it. But the adhesive backing on this is actually permanent. It is possible to take it off. Apparently it's not that difficult but uh, it's going to stay here until you want to remove it. Awesome. That was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Originally this trailer came with a small battery tray. I wanted more than that. I wanted something that I could use for storage. Something I could put one good sized battery, maybe two. I do have room for two batteries in here. This is what I got. It's an aluminum box, lightweight, light duty. I won't put too much weight in it. I bought this one from Vivor. Pretty good quality. It was at a decent price too. So let's see how much room that gives us inside. So here's the inside of the box. Lots of room. I have oriented the battery in this fashion. For now it suits my needs. Later I could add a second battery, but as it is now, there's room for the battery, some tools, maybe my wheel chalk, some leveling equipment, things like that. So it's gonna work pretty well for the moment at least. That's my Vader 100 amp hour lithium battery. There's a lid to that battery box to keep everything safe. There's a couple of DC outputs that you could connect right to that battery if you chose to. And I've screwed a piece of plywood to the top of the battery box lid. Now that's where I'm planning on installing the solar charge controller from Bateria. Uh, it's going to be easy to see, easy to read, and it should suit my needs perfectly for the moment. So I need to make a couple holes, bring the leads from the solar panel into the battery box and make that connection to the solar charge controller. So I think I'll bring these leads in right here. Not a bad idea to put some of this plastic sheathing over top of the wire. tape on there to secure it. So I've marked red and black with the correct tape. All right, now we can start making some connections. So it's going to be kind of hard for me to show everything that I'm going to do today. But the way that this battery box works is that you connect to your battery, the underside through here, and then your other connections are just connected up here through there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This was purchased for my boat. I really don't need this level of weather protection since it's in this tongue box. But I'm going to use this for now. It is a good battery box, but I probably will change it in the future to something a little more accessible. But I'm going to make those connections now. So the connections to the battery are made securely underneath this lid. As you can see, it has charge protection and things like that. So it, maybe it's a good idea to keep this one. But we're going to mount this solar charge controller to this piece of plywood with these little screws that Bacteria supplied. All right, there we go. That's not going anywhere. I almost forgot to say that. One thing I wanted to mention that you have to be a little bit cautious of, I have actually three different connections here. I have an MC4 connection, I have SAE and ring connections. That's fine, they all work fine, 
but just to know if you get these adapters off Amazon sometimes the polarity is switched from the factory they just don't always line up there is no industry standard so you have to define which one of these is positive which one is negative with your multimeter and sometimes like I did with this project you have to get this adapter in there to reverse the polarity so everything will line up properly for the final connection to your battery you know this is a very common thing in fact when you buy some of these kits with SAE connectors they will come with this adapter so you can reverse the polarity and make sure you have a successful build so we want to make sure that we connect to the battery first so you want to go to the output side connect the SAE to the battery very nice we got power as you can see now we connect to the solar that is right here all right we are in business as far as solar panel goes and battery power we're charging up here Let's check out the apps, see what's happening with the Vader battery and the Bateria solar charge controller. So let's check out what's going on inside this battery box. First, the Bateria power solar charge controller pulling in 81 watts. It's about noon and my solar panel is directly opposite to the sun. The sun is hitting the front of the trailer and uh, I'm just getting a glancing blow of the sun. So that is going to improve greatly later on. Let's look at the Vader battery, 90% pulling in 80 watts, about the same, so nice to see they correspond. It's really nice to be able to monitor these things remotely, switch between them quite easily. Everything's working as it should, awesome. So I had mentioned that this trailer is very much like a rooftop tent, it's on pistons, you just push it up it opens up into a wedge so it's very simple let's do it So as you can see, not much going on in here. It's basically a blank slate. There's just a bed, a bit of storage on the side, a couple cupboards, and just enough room on the floor to put down a dog bed for my dog to sleep. But it's very comfortable. We've used it for about 10 days. Both of those trips were in the back country, some pretty rough roads. Everything seemed to work okay. The clearance that I have works for where I want to take it. So I think it's going to work out pretty well. So where to put that inverter? Well, I think it's gonna go under the bed. And this particular inverter has a wired remote so I can turn it on and off from here. But I'm also gonna have a shut off in the battery box. So yeah, under the bed, that's where we're gonna put the inverter. So I'm gonna drill the hole right there. You can imagine it's going to be very tight. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to show you guys what I'm doing, but I have to crawl into that little space right there and drill two holes. I can't do it from the outside, so I'm going to do it from the inside. Let's get her done. Okay, so I'm going to drill my holes through here, and I need to make the hole big enough to connect these little beauties these are going to hold the wires in place. It's also going to weatherproof this box. There's a washer in there that clamps down tight on the wire and this sandwiches in between the metal of the battery box. So I'm going to use this step drill to drill those holes. Not 
plate. A little more. I think that's going to do it. Okay, there's those two wires sorted, nice and tight and weatherproof. That's how they look coming at the back side, as you can see, nice and safe and weather secured. With the owner's manual that you get with the Renogy inverter, it does suggest that you put a 150 amp fuse between the battery and the inverter itself in line. So I went ahead and done that, but I've used a breaker so I can use that as a kill switch as well. In use, out of use, nice to disconnect the inverter so there's no parasitic draw. Disconnect everything if you're not using it actually, it's the best practice. Okay, so there's been a lot of nonsense going on. Not much to see, just an old fat guy trying to pull wires through a very small space underneath that bed. So uh, anyway, the wires are pulled through into the trailer. Next is to attach this weather protective seal. That's gonna go in behind the box. A weatherproof seal is created here with washers. No bugs can get in. No moisture can get in, and this gets taped to the side of the trailer with UHB tape or ultra high bond tape. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, show you when it's installed, then we're going to move inside, find a hook of that inverter, and this whole project's going to come together. All right, so tucked way in the back there are the wires. They're fully protected from the weather. That also relieves some strain from the wires. So I'm happy with that. Okay, my friends, we're getting very close. I'm going to mount the 1000 watt inverter to the side of that piece of plywood there. Make the connections with lugs at the back and this project will be complete and we'll be able to test it. So oh, there's the inverter mounted. Let's make the connection to the battery and test the entire system. All right, get these connections. Beautiful. We can enable this. Okay, let's check that inverter out. For the moment, I plugged an extension cord into the inverter inside the trailer. We'll just test it with this orbital sander. It was handy. Seems to be working fine. I think it's going to be handy to have an inverter in the trailer. You never know. We're not going to use it very often, but if we do want one, it's there. There you have it, my little off-grid trailer, fully wired for off-grid living and adventure. So it all started off with this solar panel from Bouge RV, the Yuma 200 watt SIG solar panel. Such an awesome solar panel. It went on really easy and it's connected to the Bacteria solar charge controller, a 20 amp unit. That's powering the Vader 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with that self-heating feature. And that's all wired inside to the 1000 watt Renogy inverter. So really, I think I have everything I need. A few bits and bobs I got from Amazon here and there, adapters and cables and whatnot. But it wasn't that difficult. It was actually pretty easy. Just time consuming working in cramped locations. But I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Looks like a pretty neat install. Not professional by any means. But I think it's going to be fine. Thanks to everybody who contributed to the project. I really do appreciate it, but mostly I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next video. Maybe we'll be taking this out in the backcountry pretty soon. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.